Okay, this one's on transformers, uh, specifically low voltage transformers that we use in the HVAC industry, how they work, how to troubleshoot. Uh, got one here, a little 10 VA, that's for a humidifier. Uh, got a couple of 40 VAs, multiple voltage, and we've got a 60 VA. Uh, start with this one some things out of the way so we kind of look at this very simple transformer black and white coming out of it uh, obviously black is hot and white is neutral so it's probably going to be 120 it's got what's left of a couple of terminals there's a terminal here it's supposed to be another terminal there it's been t torn out uh, this is a very small transformer 10 VA now if we look at this thing close and this one is primary 120 volts and it's black and white is your primary wires secondary 10 VA screws okay uh, what a transformer does is and it only works with AC current it won't work with DC they take windings on the primary and they wrap a bunch of windings around this iron core, which is made of a bunch of plates. Okay. And let's say I put 100 windings on the primary. Primary is, just simply means that's where the power is coming from. And we're going to change it to a different voltage so we can use it for different things. Okay. So if I had 100 windings that came that this went into, then I would have say 10 windings on the output and I'd get 12 volts. The number of windings comparatively determines the voltage. So a lot of times you get uh, transformers that are multiple voltage, which means they've got several different taps so that so many windings are in the circuit. Uh, for different voltages. This one's just simply one. Uh, they're cheap and simple. Uh, absolutely useful. We need them for virtually any time we want to change voltage. Uh, with alternating current we can do it with these things. Uh, you'll see the big transformers on the uh, substations and the like. Those are the same thing as these they are usually step down they don't have to be they could be step up because we can't actually reverse this if I put 12 volts into the secondary I would get 120 out of the primary I'm not going to say it would last but I'm going to say it could happen so as long as we have that ratio of windings we will get specific voltages out of these things okay this one here uh, is showing the primary black is common yellow is 240 volt red is 208 remember if you're running a 208 system do not run a 240 or 230 volt transformer with it it will put out the wrong voltage it may work it may not work uh, usually if there's any electronics in the system electronics probably won't work properly okay secondary volts 24 volts, 50 VA. Probably should explain VA. Said that other one was 10 VA. Uh, VA is volts times amps, which is watts. So it is a 50 watt transformer. If I load that transformer beyond 50 watts on the secondary side, it will fail. Now in this case it won't fail because it's got a fused secondary. Fused secondary do not short. Inside here there is a fuse. Now this one here, as I said, it was 208, 230. We've got a common wire here, and we've got these two other wires. The uh, yellow is 240, the red is 208. When you hook this up, and I'm going to say you use these two wires wire nut this one off if you don't put a wire nut on it the stupid thing will short the ground just don't just cut the wire off wire nut it good idea to tape wire nuts by the way 
and uh, that way it won't short the ground. If it shorts the ground, it'll take out the transformer. Now, here's another one. This one's got 47 wires on it, it looks like. But the two windings are separated here on this uh, uh, series of plates. And the, uh, all this means with these 120, 208, and 240, just means there's different taps on the primary side. And we're only putting out 24 on the secondary side, which is very common voltage for us to use. Uh, it's not high enough to electrocute. Uh, but it's enough uh, voltage pressure to push the power through the wire. Okay, here's another one. This one's a little bigger, 60 VA. The reason I'm showing this one, this one's a little bigger, it's a 60 VA transformer, and it has a fuse in it. Now, a lot of these built a fuse right into this secondary uh, winding. Now in this case, I was using it for something. I jumpered the fuse out because the fuse had blown. If you short these these things downstream here, somewhere like this, it will take that fuse out. And what you should be doing at that point is putting an inline fuse somewhere in the system. Uh, it's not uncommon for service guys to make boo boos and uh, accidentally short something out like that and blow the fuse. So rather than changing the whole transformer, if you bypass and put an inline fuse in it, it's probably reasonably safe. I would kind of tape this thing off and, uh, so everything wasn't showing too much. It is low voltage there. Uh, but you will see these uh, fuses in many of these transformers. Uh, used to be they didn't put fuses in them unless they're about 75 VA, but they've been putting them in uh, smaller ones in the last 10-15 uh, years. So that's what they look like inside the system. It's kind of a different ball game because you got to find them and you're trying to troubleshoot them. I will remind you one thing: transformers very seldom cause failures. They very seldom are the failure. A transformer usually is a result of a failure if there's a short somewhere. Most of these things have one side of the secondary hook to the chassis ground and if the other side hits chassis ground it shorts it out it either smokes the transformer or takes out the fuse. So when we're dealing with these things remember when you go to change out one of these transformers uh, thinking it's just a bad transformer. It's probably not a bad transformer. It's probably the transformer has failed because something downstream shorted it out and killed it. Okay, and we'll talk about uh, how you troubleshoot a system with a transformer in the next video.